parts there. Good morning. <laughs>
Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your love, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we just come together to praise and to worship, to hear your word and to give, Lord, and Heavenly Father, and to just uh, bask in the glory of your precious love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together. And Lord, we pray that each and every one of us be touched by your spirit, that Heavenly Father, that nobody leave here not having been touched by your love. O oh, gracious Father, Lord, we give this service to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our confession of sins. Let us bow down before the Lord and confess our sins. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Take up the offering, please. Angie's in the hospital.
So we'll uh, seem to be doing okay though, right on that. All right. First Samuel chapter sixteen in the first thirteen verses. <coughs> <clears throat> the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Have you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his, fam and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointing stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, bad? Yes, Abinadab, and pass him, had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, "The Lord has not chosen this one either." Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, "Nor has the Lord chosen this one." Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, "The Lord has not chosen these." So he asked Jesse, are all of this, these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered. But he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy, with fine appearance and some handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. The New Testament lesson. Chapter 3, 1 Corinthians oh, 2, 16. 2, 6 through 16, yes. It says, however there, the, the however is that he had... Before that, he said, in two, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he went on to say, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. And then he says, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom a wisdom that has been hidden that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God revealed it to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him, within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit, who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. 
The spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of God. Thanks, Jim. Yes, sir. After, if you're able, please stand for a reading of our gospel. Our gospel reading is John chapter 9, verse 24. There it is. They can't, excuse me. The second time they summoned the man who had been blind, give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did, he, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciple too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? 
Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Here ends our gospel reading for today. You may be seated. I have a little trouble reading. I had a bad migraine yesterday. And as Dan will tell you, you just, it's hard to read. Sometimes I'll, I'll read a sentence and actually see it backwards, which doesn't work too good. <laughs> but but uh, I thought this morning I'm going to look at Corinthians. First Corinthians, actually a better title would have been um, the, the Wisdom from the Spirit, rather than we have the mind of Christ, which is absolutely true. But the context here has to do more of wisdom from the Spirit. Oftentimes when I, I text Marlena, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to share on Sunday morning. And so I just kind of picked that out. But when you think of that, wisdom from the Spirit. And in these times, we need wisdom from the Spirit, don't we? I mean, I was just speaking with somebody here a few days ago. And they were just, oh, they were just uh, all kinds of trouble. They just uh, worried about this and that. And... And specifically, just what's happening in the world and our nation, and it just had them all unraveled, and they just couldn't understand what was going on, and how could God allow this and that, and, you know, but what they're looking at, they're looking at the wisdom of the world, and not the wisdom of Christ, the wisdom from the Spirit, and that we have, that's what we have to have. If we're not living by the wisdom of the Spirit, well, then we're not going to have the mind of Christ. And we're going to have all kinds of turmoil. We're not going to understand a lot of things. You know, there's a lot of things happening in this world. And when we see it from God's point of view, you start to understand a lot of things. You know, and I don't, surely, surely don't have all the answers. You know, why some suffer and why some don't. And why some get cancer, why some don't. And, and uh, but when we have... God's word, and we, we look at things through the spirit that, uh, and that wisdom that, that God gives us, we can see a lot of things clearer. And, you know, the stand there started our scripture reading there, and actually verse 1 there, and uh, to get the context here, and the apostle Paul, he's speaking about Christ crucified, and he says, And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. And that word testimony, many, of, um, many um, manuscripts actually have mystery. And so when I came to you, brothers, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony or the mystery of God with lofty speech or wisdom. And, you know, what's the mystery? And um, Jesus speaks of that in Matthew 13, 11. He says, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. And the Apostle Paul, writing Ephesians 3, chapter 3, How the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, that is, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And, of course, the mystery is Christ. And it is a mystery, isn't it? Hey, you think about it. Here's God who's created everything. I mean, he's God. And then he sends his son into the world to die in that horrid cross for us. And it is a mystery. And I, I often think about that. I say, God, how could you do such a thing? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But that's the mystery of it. And uh, uh, God here, it says, God's mystery, which is Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And so it is a mystery. But then he says here, For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. 
And I was with you in weakness and in fear with much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so I, he says, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And then you go back to the, the first chapter, verse 22. He says, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. And I was, uh, last night I was watching a Paul Washer, and he was talking about the crucifixion, the cross, and just the mystery of it, and, and, uh, and, and just the, the wisdom of it. And as Christians, that to focus on and to know God and, and to understand how this happened and, and when we can, we, compre we can never fully comprehend it because it's just beyond our, our, our thinking. He says, but when we look to the cross, you know, what does it say? That to look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get wisdom. And it's the wisdom of, this, of, 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 of the spirit. Because to the world, it doesn't make sense. And he talks about here that his message wasn't in fancy words or wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And that word power, it means miraculous power. I could just imagine being in those days. And, you know, the Apostle Paul, he would touch a handkerchief and they would take it to somebody that was sick and dying, and, and, and the person would touch that handkerchief and be healed. I mean, you just see the power, the miraculous power in the early church. Uh, but he's just making the point that, it, that uh, the message, it wasn't due to man's wisdom, but, to, but to the spirit, and the spirit in a capital letter there, and the power, the miraculous power, so that the faith, your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You know, I'm watching Paul Washer again last night. It's one of my favorite sermons, and he just talks about, and this is very true, how much that in the modern church, it's, it's wisdom of men. And I'll never forget, and I, I bring him up quite often, I suppose, but I guess he's just somebody that just really opened my eyes a lot, and it's that... Uh, that Lutheran pastor of uh, the university in Bemidji there. When you went into his office, he was, I mean, it was all wisdom. I mean, he looked wise, he dressed wise, his office looked wise, he looked like he was the wisest man in the world. And maybe in the world he was, but I don't know. I know one thing that when he told me, he said that the cross, he says, for me to think, that mankind is the only way to salvation, that heaven is through the cross. He says, you're a ludicrous. I mean, he just, and I realized that, that, no, his wisdom is of the world. The world would applaud him, wouldn't they? Oh, yes, it's not just through Jesus Christ. I mean, he literally said, if you want to believe in the, oh, I forget what it was, a bologna sandwich, something just really ridiculous. If that's what you believe in, that's what you believe in. And, uh, and so much is in the wisdom of man, but, but we preach the gospel. And, uh, and for that day when we could see, and I mean, we see God do miracles, don't we? I mean, we got a lady sitting right here in the one, two, third row back that's seen plenty of them. And, uh, but, but that our faith doesn't rest in the wisdom of men. But then when you get into our, now you get into our scripture reading, and in verse 6, it says, Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom. And so there is a wisdom among the mature. And, you know, I was thinking this week, and there's just there's a few people I've known through the years, like that old missionary that I traveled with. They had a wisdom, a powerful, powerful wisdom that was from the Spirit. And, 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 and you, you would just gleam from them. You know, and there's, there's people through history that have written books about their faith and their, and their, their closeness to Christ. And, and so they impart a wisdom, don't they? 
And I love, you know, I've got in my commentaries that I have on, on Scripture. There's some men in there that the wisdom that God has given them concerning Scripture. And so they do impart a, wis a, a, a wisdom, but it's a wisdom that's from the Holy Spirit. It's not a worldly wisdom. And then he says, although it is not a wisdom of the sage or of the rulers of the sage who are doomed to pass away. And again, thinking of that, uh, that, that Lutheran pastor in Bemidji, his wisdom and, and he himself are, are doomed to pass away, aren't they? I mean, the things of this world, the wisdom of this world. You know, I've, not too long ago, I was listening on the radio and they were talking about the... Uh, in California, they've built this computer that is so smart that they've actually uh, started some kind of, uh, oh, what, what do you call it, religion? Yeah, literally religion. They're worshiping this computer as a god. <laughs> Think about it. It just doesn't make any sense, does it? And that's all doomed to pass away. And then he says in verse 7, But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God which God decreed before the ages for our glory. And it's just like the, the uh, verses I had read. As Jesus said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. And Paul talks about the mystery that was made to him by revelation and the apostles and the prophets, that the, the, the wisdom of God, the, 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 the mystery of Jesus Christ, the mystery of his word. And then he talks about there. So it was which God decreed before the ages for our glory. That's an interesting statement. It doesn't say for God's glory, but for our glory. I have spent time just looking that up and, and reading. And, and what does it mean for our glory? And one of my commentators, I love the way he puts it. He says, the glory of inward enlightenment as well as outward exaltation. And I love the way he says that. The glory of inward enlightenment as well as outward exaltation. And so the secret and hidden wisdom of God is for our glory. I mean, the enlightenment, that makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, when, that, when that, the word of God, that mystery, as we learn more and more about Jesus Christ, we understand the cross, you know, and there's, there's a, it's a, a lot of churches now, and some of your mega churches, they will not speak of sin. Well, like Joel Osteen, he openly says, I will not speak of sin. And, but, but, but that's what the cross is about, isn't it? The cross is about sin. Somebody had to pay the price. Somebody had to. I like that the, the men's, but the men's uh, at the other, last weekend, we had the, the men's camp there, the Bible camp, men's retreat. And the guy, the, the guy that was teaching, he had a T-shirt that said, somebody had to pay the price. And I thought that was a cool thing to put on a, on a T-shirt. But it, 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 it's what the, the, the mystery of the cross is. That sin, somebody had to pay that sin. And when we understand that, and we're enlightened by that, and of course, and it is outward exaltation. You know, God exalts us, doesn't he? You know, what does it say? He hates the, the proud, but, he, but he, he, he lifts up the humble. He gives grace to the humble. And then he says in verse 8, None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If the Jews, if the leadership of the Jews had understood, see, they never really understood who Jesus was. I mean, our, our gospel reading, you know, they couldn't understand that, that Jesus, I mean, who's this guy that opens the eyes of this blind man? They didn't believe it. And, and, it was, so, it was so clear before them, but yet they hardened their heart. And I thought of the verse where it says that the God of this age has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever. And you think about if the, the Jews, and I, just something I was thinking about, 
And it's just kind of an interesting thing really to, to, to ponder. What if the Jews, if the leadership of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, if the whole leadership of the Jews would have declared this is our Messiah, he is our Messiah, and they would have loved Jesus, they, we want to serve you. And the whole nation had come to faith in Jesus Christ. Well, who would have crucified him? The Romans didn't want to crucify him. The Pilate said, I find no guilt in this man. I don't want to let him go. The only reason he crucified Christ because he was, he was pressured into it by the Jewish leaders. Now, what if they had not crucified Jesus some 2,000 years ago and, and fully with open arms and open hearts accepted him as their Messiah? I think things would be a lot different, wouldn't they? Maybe Christ would have set up his kingdom at that time, and that would have been the end of a life as we know it. I don't know. But it's something to think about. But, of course, God the Father had a plan, didn't he? It was all his plan that Jesus Christ would be sent to the cross. You know, and even that's a mystery, isn't it? That, you know, that one thing Paul Washer was talking about last night. You know, Abraham, when he was going to sacrifice Isaac, he was willing to do it. He was going to do it until God stopped him. But then some thousand years later, that, that knife that, that Abraham had that he was going to kill his son with, slaughter his son, God the Father took that knife, and he did slaughter his son. And that's a mystery, isn't it, that God would do that for us. And just his love for us is a mystery, and... I mean, it, it, it's when you look at, at, at Jesus Christ and that crucifixion, it's a mystery. And it's a mystery that we'll spend the rest of our lives looking at and pondering. And, and, uh, and the more that we understand, we understand God. And one thing Paul said last night, too, he says that, that most Christians don't understand who God is. They think he's just a big, happy, big old guy in heaven with a long beard. And, and whatever we ask, he's, he's there to, to, uh, to give us our wishes. And, but that's not God, is it? That's not the God of the scriptures. And so, and so the people at the time, the leaders, if they had understood, they would not have, not have crucified him. And then he says in verse 9, and he's quoting from Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. But as it is written, what no, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. And I thought it was interesting as Stan read that it says, uh, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the mind of man imagined. In my Bible, the ESV, chose a translated heart. And actually what the word is, it, it, it means heart, it, it's a, a mind, but what it is, it's the deepest thoughts, the deepest thoughts of a man, of mankind. And I mean, you think of our deepest thoughts, and here, that we're not going to be imagined, we can't even imagine the things in our inner thoughts are deep down that, that God has planned for us, that is prepared for us. But then he also says, for those who love him. And that word love, it means agape. And agape means indicating a direction of the will and finding one's joy in something or someone. It's a, it's a love. It's a love that, that, as it says there, it's a direction of the will. My, my will is to love God. My, my will is to love my Lord Jesus. And, and as he says there, it's, it's like a condition. It's for those who love him with this type of love. You know, a wishy-washy going to church every six months. And yeah, I know, J, I know JC. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I read the Bible every once, yeah, Christmas time, you know. And, but this is a love he's talking about. This is a love that... It's the kind of love that God loves us. I mean, God loves us. He, it's his will to love us. He doesn't love us because he thinks we're cute and we're nice and we're cuddly. You know, and we sing real cute little songs to him. And No, 
he loves us because he wills to love us. And so this is a very powerful love. And then he goes on and he says in verse 10, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. That word reveal, it just, it just means to take off the cover. God, he's taken the cover off. He's revealed these things to us. And of course, it's through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. And then he says in verse 11, because that's kind of a, you read that. Well, how does God search God? Because the Spirit is God, so how is he searching? And he kind of explains it here in verse 11. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person? And how true that is. I could stand up here and I can't read people's minds. I could see somebody who's probably sleeping and they're thinking, let's see, they're probably dreaming of ice fishing this winter, you know, and, and uh, whatever. But I can't, I can't, uh, read people's minds and none of us can we can have maybe have a thought what somebody's looking at they're looking out the window at the sunshine and if they were looking at me yeah he's probably thinking about ripping down the road on his motorcycle and so but we can't really can we we can't read minds and it's the same thing here as as as, uh, as paul is saying so also no one comprehends the thoughts of god except the spirit of god we can't know the thoughts of god can we it's impossible it's only the Spirit of God. It's just the same as we can't read each other's minds. But then he says in verse 12, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And so, like he said, we have not received the Spirit of the world. That Spirit is a small s. But the Spirit, which is a capital S, who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. It's not the spirit of the world that gives, that tells us about God. It's the spirit who is from God. And of course, we understand, don't we? As believers, we're a temple of the Holy Spirit. I mean, that, to me, that's a mystery. I mean, think about it. We are a temple, of a believer in Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, do you not know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? The Old Testament, God, the temple, it was in the midst of the 12 tribes. That's where God's presence was among his people. But now, in the New Testament, the, the, the New Covenant, when Jesus, he died on the cross, he says, it is finished. And the curtain of the temple was ripped in two. We were looking at that Monday night. In the, the temple, you had the holy, and then you had the most holy, the holy, holy. And in the holy, the, the priest would come every day, and he would, with the, 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 with the, with the um, incense and with the prayers of the people and all, and then once a year go into the holy of holies, and always with blood. And, and I'm going my head here, and I'm getting lost here. But... Um, but, uh, oh yeah, the temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. But when Jesus died on that cross, and he, and he paid for sin, and now as believers, when we come to Christ, we're a temple, we're, 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 we're clean. See, God could only be, he couldn't be, he had to be in that temple because it was set apart as holy, and the priest would cleanse it with blood and, and uh, with the blood of animals and, and, and all that. And, and so God it had to be in a place that was holy. He made that a place holy for him. And now through Jesus Christ dying on that cross, each and every believer is now a holy, a temple. And God is able, he is able to indwell us. And we have that spirit of God. And then he says, says we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. And the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. 
And so the natural person cannot understand the things of God. They're foolishness to him. And for me, one of the best examples for me was uh, when we lived in Illinois. I was still, I was driving a truck. I was driving an 18-wheeler around the Illinois and Wisconsin. And, um, and on Saturdays, my neighbor and I, old Scotty, he liked hiking, he liked photography. And so the two of us, and most Saturdays, we get together and go for a hike with our cameras. And uh, at the time, I was preaching once a month in our church. And he liked to, he liked to kid me. And one, one Saturday, he says, well, what are you preaching on tomorrow? I saw the resurrection of the dead. Oh, he says. You can imagine Scott. Oh, you know, and he said, oh, that sounds really interesting. I was well, that like to the night of the dead, you know? And he just, just giving me a hard time. And I explained to him, oh, so when Jesus Christ comes back and he shouts, there's a trumpet and the dead are raised. And, and uh, he just thought it was a big joke. Well, some months later, and I don't remember how it all happened, he got, but he got saved in a little storefront church. And he was, he, was, he was on fire for the Lord, and, and he was going there to Bible studies. And, and here one Saturday morning, he, he, he's sitting there, and he says, You know, remember, um, remember when you told me you were going to preach on the, the, the resurrection of the dead? And I said, uh, Yeah. He thought it was a big joke. He said, uh, Yeah. He says, I don't think that way anymore. <laughs> he says, uh, Last night uh, in our Bible study, that's what the pastor taught on. And he says, You know, I believe it. I truly believe it. See, it, it was foolishness to him. That's why you don't lot. You, you try to explain spiritual things to people. You know, that's that's why so many hate. They 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 hate what we stand for, but they can't understand it. If they would understand it, and and uh, well, you see, you got to be saved. You have to have the spirit of God to understand it, because it's spiritually discerned, and and, and that's precious, isn't it? I mean, I. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be uh, a scholar. The, the things of the cross and the things of God, is, it's all right here. And, you know, and, and some people, it's hard to read. Some people can't read at all. And, you know, but God still, if they love, they, they love him. And, you know, they, they, they can, on TV or the radio, there's some great teachings and preaching and listening to tapes, you know, the scripture. And it, it's, all, it's all spiritually discerned. And then he says in verse 15, the spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. And that's been taken out of context in a big way. People look at that, see, that says right there that there can be no judging in a church, that, that, that nobody in the church can judge anybody else. But that's taking it out of context. Because if we think there's no judging in the church, that, that, there's no, that the leadership of the church isn't to judge to, or, or, um, or, you know, whatever in the church, when it comes to church discipline and things, well, just go up, up a few chapters to chapter 5 and read that. Because there is, definitely there's, there's church discipline in, there's, in, in the church. And, but what Paul is saying here, what the Holy Spirit is saying, that word judges, it's, it's taken out of context. Because really, it, it, it is the spiritual person judges, he examines, he discerns all things. And so we examine, we discern. And in the context of this verse, Paul is talking about spiritual wisdom compared to the worldly looking at us and not understanding. And so the spiritual person examines and discerns all things. I mean, I, you examine, you discern the things of Scripture, the things of God, and but is himself to be judged or to be examined, discerned by no one. See, people in the world, they can't, they can't discern. They, 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 they can't examine us. Not, not in truth, because they don't understand. They don't have the Holy Spirit. And so it's oftentimes we could, the world wants to make us look foolish, doesn't it? I remember Mike Pence. And uh, he's gotten a lot of flack since the, 
since the election, I guess maybe he deserves it. I don't know, but but I do remember that he had told the reporters or whatever they, that he did not go to lunch with the woman unless his wife was there present. You know, and they laughed at him for that, didn't they? And he got ridiculed for that. But see, that's one of those things. He knew that for him as a, a married man to be with another woman without his wife would not have been right. And that's how we get ridiculed. You know, when we think of teenagers getting ridiculed in school and, you know, like you believe what the Bible says and you, people will laugh at that. But they, who are they to discern? They can't discern what we know. And, um, and that's just something that, and as time goes on, and as time, there's going to be more and more upheaval in our country and, and, and against Christianity, and we're going to be laughed at, and, but it doesn't matter because they can't examine us. They can't discern us in church and in, in truth. And then he says in the last verse here, for who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him that we have the mind of Christ? And who has understood the mind of the Lord? Well, the world surely doesn't. And I mean, we surely can't instruct him, can we? But when we have the mind of Christ, we can understand a whole lot about our Lord. Because he, we have the mind. What does the word say? The, uh, the renewal of the mind comes through God's word. The more we understand this word and, and live it and, and trust it and, and breathe it. And, you know, those few people I was talking about, that, like that old missionary, old Pastor Lynn Heights that I travel with. He lived and breathed this book. He knew this book frontwards and backwards. He was just a little old guy. And people look at him, well, who's that old guy? And he would get up and he would speak at conferences and things and just people would be flabbergasted. Where'd that come from? Well, that was the wisdom of the Spirit, the anointing of the Spirit. And see, he had the mind of Christ. And that's what all of us, you know, we know what, that we want a heart for Jesus Christ, don't we? We're, you know, the, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. He wants us to love him. That, that's what we're on this earth for to love him, to have fellowship with Christ, and to take that love and take it to the world, to an unbelieving world, and share the love of Jesus Christ. And you know, one of the things that's interesting about the early church, there was the signs and wonders in the early church, and many, many came to faith through that. But there was also in the early church, they had a love, a, a, a love that only God could give, and, and God would love the loss through them. You know, they had plagues. They had they had uh, plagues like we have now. And prob probably worse because, you know, thousands and hundreds of thousands of people would die. But the ones that were in there caring for the sick were always the Christians. And many people saw that. And they thought there must be something to this. If they're willing to die for their fellow men, there must be something to this. And so they had the mind of Christ. They knew what Christ loved and cared for. And, and I just, you know, we look at these verses and we understand that, that there is a wisdom. It's a supernatural wisdom. It doesn't come through man. And again, yes, Paul talks about a wisdom of the mature. There's wisdom. And I mean, like I'm, I love when I study for, for Sunday, and I look up the different commentaries, like John Gill, a man in his time that was so full of the spirit and wisdom. I'm going to glean from what he has to say. And he probably most likely gleaned from others. And so there is a wisdom in that. And, but it's always a, it's a wisdom of the spirit, because it's the spirit that, that, that he writes through. And I mean, it's just like our, our, our scriptures. It's, it's, it's spirit. It's truth. You know, and if we want a wisdom that's not of this world, and it's precious. I mean, you look at things that are happening in the world, and, and uh, I was just explaining to somebody the other day, you know, the, the, just the turmoil of what's going on. And I said, but you know, God's in control. None of this surprises God. It's all part of his plan. 
and, and, and it, it, it seems, I mean, many believe this, that God is allowing our country to, to be as it is, to bring our country back to him. And of course, when there's great persecution of the church, that's when the church is the strongest. The early church was powerful, and then when it was made legal to be a Christian, well, that's when Christianity just kind of fell apart. There wasn't the power, the, the wisdom of the Spirit. Now it was into the Greek stuff and the teachings and all this and that and philosophy and, and the church lost that wisdom of the Spirit, that power of the Spirit. And she told me, look at these days, what's happening? In one hand, it, it does make you angry. And, you know, just a few people are, you know, with the gay movement and all this stuff. And it's just, and you think, how can this be? And, and, but yet on the other hand, as the world gets darker and darker, the gospel gets brighter and brighter. You know, and, and just to, to see things as God sees it. And we see it through this book. And, and I just encourage you, I told, I've told a few people now, don't sit and watch the news. Now, we don't want to be dumb on the news, but at the same time, you know, if we spend as much time in our Bibles as we do watching the news, um, uh, we'd probably probably make a saint. I just saw them this morning. They want to make Dolly Parton a saint. <laughs> I don't know what kind of wisdom that is, but I don't think it's God's wisdom. But, but you know, there's a supernatural. And as we seek to understand our God, how much he loves us, and what he went through to demonstrate his love, I mean that the Son of God on that cross and all that has to involve that. And, oh, there's a lot of wisdom there. And it's a supernatural wisdom that, that each and every one of us don't have to be a pastor or missionary. To, it, it's, it's whoever wants it. It's there for God to give. Amen. Well, let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. I just thank you, oh, Lord, for your, this wisdom, Lord a supernatural wisdom, and to understand, Lord, and to know, and to seek, and, and to know who you are, and, and that, Lord, that we have your spirit within us, and that, Lord, we can, that we can understand what your, what your thoughts are, and, 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 Lord, what, in a sense, what makes you tick, Heavenly Father, and, oh, Lord, what a glorious thing, and if we could just grasp that, just to com comprehend a little bit how powerful that is that Lord we live in a world that's natural but Lord we can walk in the supernatural that the Holy Spirit that he can live through us and that we die to ourselves and that we live to Jesus Christ that he lives through us Lord what a powerful thing there's so much there that Lord we're just scratching the surface and I just thank you, Lord. I pray for all of us. Lord, may we seek that wisdom that's from above. Spend time in your word. And Lord, to see things from your point of view. Oh, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And in hymn number uh, 609, Jesus will walk with me.
Any praises this morning? Amen. I don't know, Susie, that doesn't sound too praiseworthy to me, getting your teeth pulled. <laughs> Amen. Dan, she wants you to come up and pray for her. But anybody else? In the rain, Amen. That's cooled off. We're back to normal weather, right? I love that heat. Boy, when it was in the 80s, I just... My feet were cold this morning. <laughs> Scared. <laughs> Scared? No, I'm just cold. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, Lynette? Her mother left message that uh, she uh, she got the flu. I'll go up go up there today. Does anybody else stand? And uh, Bob text, he wants uh, prayer for their travels home. And then uh, you got to pray for Afghanistan. It, uh, there's thousands and thousands of people that, that came to Jesus Christ. And now they're, they're in hiding. And apparently they're, when they would come to Christ, many of them made it official and it was... It's in their records, and the Taliban has that now. Just imagine that. The Taliban's got your name, and they're coming for you. Yeah, horrible thing, isn't it? So we got to pray for the Christians of Afghanistan. What a just horrible thing. Pardon? Oh, or somebody else raising a hand for prayer? Amen. Amen. Okay, anybody else? Oh, a little girl, ten. And cancer has over Joe Hans. He's really, uh, really struggling. He's gotten really weak. And uh, um, what's the pretty lady's name that's on the piano back there? Nancy. <laughs> Sorry, Nancy. But uh, they were so thankful for that newsletter, Nancy. I didn't realize they were getting it. So, but they said that has really blessed them. But he's on him. Oh, yeah, and he's on his friend Vonda in um, 
Oklahoma, her and her husband had the COVID. And then um, the Lyca's parents, they both had it. And she was even vaccinated, still got it. And then um, the Lyca's parents, my son-in-law, um, they have it. So it's, it's, uh, it's spreading, isn't it? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly, do you have a hand up there? Uh, Cody? No? Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. I'm well, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, and Lord, we lift up these needs to you. Heavenly Father, we just lift up Barb and Marge, and as they travel, and anybody else that's traveling today, or this week, Lord, for safety on the highways, and to get home safe, Lord, and we pray for Lynette and her, and her, uh, and her sharing with the ladies, her teaching there, Heavenly Father. We pray that you bless her. We pray a lot of ladies sign up, Lord, and we pray for Angie. Heavenly Father, we pray that this um, that this uh, flu, Lord, that it uh, she's over and done with it, and that Heavenly Father, she can go home today. And and Lord, we pray for the little girl, ten years old with cancer. Lord, it's one of those things we don't understand. And the Heavenly Father, you know this little girl, you love this little girl, and we pray, Heavenly Father, for a miracle. Heavenly Father, touch this little girl. We pray and. And I don't know if her family or parents are believers, but Heavenly Father, I think of the little girl that, uh, that they said was dead. And <clears throat> Jesus went into the room, and, and uh, what did he say that? Uh, stand up, little girl. And she stood up, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we pray. We pray for the same for this little girl, Lord. And uh, we pray for Lessa's sister that's just got married. Lord, may you bless their marriage. May they have uh, many, many years together. And, and Lord, may it just be a, a special marriage, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we pray for those with the COVID. We pray for uh, Vonda and Steve and, and um, Earl and Joan, Heavenly Father, and, and others, Lord. We, we lift them up to you. We pray they're over it quickly, Heavenly Father. We pray, too, for our nation, Lord. And, we don't know what's going to happen and what's going to come about of all this, Heavenly Father, but, but you know, Heavenly Father, and, and so we lift that up to you, and we lift up our, uh, our missionaries to you. Lord, we lift up each and every person that's on our list here, and Heavenly Father, we, we lift up Afghanistan to you, and oh, Lord, the Christians that are there, they're gonna, that are going to suffer. Lord, we pray that... Uh, May it not happen, Heavenly Father. May, may you protect them, Heavenly Father. And, oh, Lord, we pray that uh, our nation, does, the White House doesn't just let people get slaughtered. Lord, um, uh, Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, I'm not even sure how to pray. But, Lord, I've just lift them up to you, Heavenly Father. And, and Lord, we lift up all of our loved ones that, that need a special touch, Lord, that are hurting physically, financially, mentally, Lord, whatever it might be. Lord, we lift them up to you. And, and Heavenly Father, we thank you for each of our missionaries that you bless them and protect them and meet their needs, Heavenly Father. And, and Lord, we just as, again thank you that you are God and that you love us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And then any announcements? Oh, I'm sorry, Susie. I forgot about you, but Dan sure didn't. <laughs> huh? Yeah, we're going to do that. Thank you. 
that this queen would have been a father. And if she smiles, Heavenly Father, if she's got a smile like Holy Murphy, Heavenly Father. So Lord, we pray. Bless her, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Any announcements? Lynette? Thus so we stand for our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the benediction of the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his counsel upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, Fairest Lord Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.